I'd like to start by saying a few words about the ransomware cyber attack currently impacting Colonial Pipeline. This is something that my administration, our administration, has been tracking extremely carefully. And I have been perfectly, personally briefed every day. The Department of Energy is working directly with Colonial to get the pipelines back online and operating at full capacity as quickly and safely as possible. My administration takes issue uh, of this, uh, takes this very seriously. We have efforts underway with the FBI and DOJ, Department of Justice, to disrupt and, and uh, prosecute ransomware criminals. In addition to companies stepping up, we need to invest uh, to safeguard our critical infrastructure. That's one of the many things my American Jobs Plan is designed to do. I also want to update the people on the progress that we've made in our recovery and the next steps that we're going to be taking. Americans want to work. As my dad used to say, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity, your place in the community, being able to look your kid in the eye and say everything's going to be okay. 22 million people lost their jobs in this pandemic through no fault of their own. They lost their jobs to a virus and to a government that bungled its response to the crisis and failed to protect them. Families, Families who are just trying to put food on the table, keep a roof over their head, they aren't the problem. We need to stay focused on the real problems in front of us, beating this pandemic and creating jobs. We need employers to step up in a couple of ways. First, we need them to get help to their people and get them vaccinated. We also need to recognize that people will come back to work if they are paid a decent wage. That as our economy comes back, these companies will provide fair wages and safe work environments. And if they do, they'll find plenty of workers. And we're all going to come out of this together better than before. So we need to stay focused on creating jobs and beating this pandemic today and building back better for tomorrow. America, the American Rescue Plan is just that, a rescue plan. But it's not nearly enough. That's why we need the American Jobs Plan, which is an eight-year investment, an eight-year investment strategy, and to put us in a position to win the competition with China and the rest of the world for the 21st century. That's the next stage. That's what I'm, we're doing right now. We're working to get that passed. I want to thank you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. President, if you can't protect critical infrastructure from a criminal actor, how can you possibly protect it from a state actor? We can do both, and we will. Do you think Russia is involved at all implicitly with that attack? I'm going to have a convert. I'm going to be meeting with President Putin, and uh, so far there is no evidence based on from our intelligence people that Russia is involved, although there is evidence that the actor's ransomware is in Russia. They have some responsibility to deal with this. Thank you. you. Decided who will get the AstraZeneca doses, Mr. President. Hi, everyone. Hello. Happy Monday. Uh, today we are joined by Homeland Security Advisor and Deputy National Security Advisor Dr. Liz Sherwood Randall and Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technologies Ann Neuberger. I know you all know who they are, so I'm going to skip the introductions so we have more time for questions. We have very limited time, but we'll try to take as many as possible. So with that, I'll turn it over to Liz. So on the issue of gas prices, as I indicated right now, there are no supply disruptions. And the Department of Energy's information agency, the EIA, is doing the analysis right now about potential supply disruptions and what price effects that could have. And we're working with other agencies to consider how, if necessary, we can move supplies to a place where it might be needed if it turns out that there is a shortfall. Turning it over to Jen and Liz. Thank you for your time today. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you both for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks,
Okay. Um, I know we also have a hard stop because of the president's remarks. Just keeping you busy on a Monday. How does the White House know that people are just choosing not to apply for jobs because the extra unemployment benefits are so good? We don't see um, much evidence that the extra unemployment uh, insurance is a major driver in uh, people not rejoining the workforce. We actually see the data uh, and uh, our analysis shows that uh, lack of vaccination, the lower rate, which is why I referred to the data in the week that it was taken, it has an impact. Child care has an impact. Schools reopening has an impact. But there is also the need to pay a livable working wage. And that's one of the reasons the president will talk about that this afternoon. But as Bank of America economists who are cited in a Bloomberg story say, anybody making less than $32,000 a year is better off financially just taking the unemployment benefit. So is the White House creating an incentive just to stay home? Well, again, uh, the majority of economists uh, internally and ex externally of the White House don't feel that unemployment insurance, something that was done um, at a time where to help unemployed people get through a very difficult economic downturn during a pandemic, is a, is the, a major driver in, uh, in our unemployment data, that there are other factors, bigger factors, that were contributing, have been contributing to the numbers we saw on Friday. That's what we're working to address, uh, and that's where we think our solution should be focused. And just last one really quick. The Commerce Secretary says the main reason that people are staying home is fear. How does the White House know that people are scared? What is that based on? Well, I think what she was referring to is the fact that there were there was a much lower vaccination rate just a month ago, and that uh, people are fearful about getting sick. They are fearful about whether they're going to have the conditions to be healthy, whether they can send their kids to a child care center, whether there is a child care center. So those are all factors that are consistent with uh, the examples and reasons I just provided. And we were at a phase just a several weeks ago, and you cover this closely, so you know well, where there was such a demand for the vaccine. People were eager to get their appointment. They were uh, had vaccine t-shirts. They were doing selfies. We are now at the point which we always knew we would be at, where the supply has uh, increased, has, has exceeded the demand. And it means we have to work extra hard to get into communities, to have partnerships with, uh, with local doctors, with uh, primary care physicians, to expand access expand mobile units that are going into communities to get the supply out to people. We have reached, uh, hit a, a higher number than I think most people anticipated at this point um, since the president was inaugurated, the number of people who have been vaccinated, who have received their first dose and are hopefully on their way to their second dose. So we knew we would be in this phase, and we knew we'd be in a phase where it'd be more uh, difficult uh, because we need to increase access, which we've been focused on doing from the beginning, and continue to increase confidence. We have seen progress in both areas. The president's commitment to a global COVID-19 response uh, has been steadfast and consistent since day one, when we made the decision to rejoin the WHO. We understand that the border, the virus knows no borders, that it is important for the United States to continue to play a central role in addressing the global pandemic. We've invested more than any other country in COVAX, and we're pushing other countries to invest more in the program to get vaccines to developing countries. We're working to boost global production through partnerships like the Quad Partnership. Moderna and Pfizer have announced plans and intentions to increase supply and get it out to the global community. And of course, we've announced that we are going to uh, share 60 million doses, 10 million of which, as Josh referred to or alluded to earlier, will be hopefully approved by the FDA soon. So there's no question we're playing a role. We will continue to play an increased role uh, in efforts to address the pandemic and get the pandemic under control. Black, Latino, and Asian students aren't going back to school at the same rates as white students. There are a lot of people who are worried about mm -hmm. that equity gap. Does the administration have a goal and a number in mind for, for how this should be um, playing out when it comes to, to students and who's going back to school and what, what are the aim, what's the aim there? Yeah, certainly as we look to uh, uh, wait for and hope for, of course, uh, approval of uh, the uh, of, a, of one of the vaccines to to uh, be safe for 12 to 15 year olds. I know this is something that's on the minds of uh, parents around the country. My kids are not quite that old, but I certainly relate to and understand that. And we will continue to do what we have done with a range of communities across the country where there has been. Uh, 
issues with confidence, whether it's communities of color, where there has been a massive increase in confidence as more people get vaccinated, or more conservative communities, where we've also seen an increase in confidence as more people in communities are vaccinated. So one of the reasons that we are partnering with uh, with primary care physicians and local doctors is because we know that is an effective way, not just with adults, but with parents uh, to help address questions they have, concerns they have about whether or not uh, getting the vaccine, taking the vaccine for their kids is safe, is effective, and, and is necessary. And that is a program we, were, we will continue to increase our investment in. I think we'll have more to say about that in the coming days.